All right, you are joining us this afternoon with the House Judiciary and Government Operations Committees. Um, we are meeting on S219. Um, earlier today, the Senate Judiciary Committee took a look at the version of S219 that has now passed second reading in the House, and, um, and they developed from that some proposed Excuse me. Uh, instances of amendment. Uh, Maxine, do you want us to go right to Bryn and have her walk us through the content of those seven or so amendments? Yes, that, that would be that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Bryn. For folks following along at home, the amendments should be able to be accessed on the committee pages for Judiciary and GovOps. So take it away, Bryn. Okay, good afternoon committees. For the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council. Um, so to set the stage here, the, the bill is not officially passed the House since you, it hasn't um, passed third reading yet. Um, but I talked to the Senate Judiciary Committee this morning and walked them through what the House version of the bill did. And um, they came up with uh, concurrence with further instances of amendment, which is what you see. Um, you, you should have that posted to your committee page. I believe it's um, draft 2.1 from 152 this afternoon. Um, and there's also a side-by-side -side comparison of the three versions of S219. So um, I will just describe those changes. And if there are questions, it may make sense to go through the side by side to look more specifically at what the amendments do. So the first three instances of amendment are all in the legislative intent section and um, they make three specific changes. The first is to remove the, um, that qualifier of within the next five years. Um, that language comes from the um, legislative intent portion that's talking about um, what legislative committees of jurisdiction are doing now, continue to study law enforcement policies, training standards, and discipline. And if you remember that um, the, the House version included that phrase, including accreditation through the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies within the next five years. Um, so it was sort of a statement about the ongoing work that's being done now. Um, so the Senate re just removed that qualifier of within the next five years. Um, so the next two changes are probably more substantive. Um, the first is that they removed subdivision C1. So that is in the list of work that the General Assembly commits to working on. If you recall, um, one of those, one, it was, I'm sorry, it's not C1, it's C2 in that list, which is resituating the Criminal Justice Training Council to the jurisdiction of the Department of Public Safety. So they re removed that subdivision entirely. And they also removed the subdivision, um, I believe it's five, yes, it's five, which it was that, um, the General Assembly commits to working on reviewing those model policies governing the use of body cameras in, um, for law enforcement, specifically the ACLU model policy and the Law Enforcement Advisory Board policy, reviewing those in conjunction with stakeholders um, and developing a statewide policy for adoption prior to um, the effective date of the section of the bill that would require all Vermont State Police to be outfitted with body cameras. So they also removed Bryn. that Bryn? section. Excuse, excuse me, Bryn. So I'm actually I'm not quite following. Um, were you just you were just talking about C five? Did they did they also take out C three mental health? No, they did not take out C three. Okay, so that's in. Yep, they, they, that's in. So yeah, the instances of, of amendment is a little tricky to read because everything has to be renumbered. So um, it, it. May, it may help to look at the side by side. Okay. Um, and then you can, I've, I've highlighted the sections. Um, if everyone has a side by side in front of them, the, the middle column is the house version. Right. And I've highlighted the, the, the subsections that the Senate removed. 
where is the side by side? Brittany emailed it to us. Uh, uh, email. It's posted to your committee page too for today. So it may it may be helpful to, to just say at the outset that the Senate kept all of the changes that the House made to the um, to the legislative intent section, except for those three, um, except for those three things I just described. The first was that qualifier that of five years for accreditation for law enforcement, um, and then the maybe more substantive changes that they made were to remove those two um, items that the General Assembly committed to working on in the future. The first was the resituating the Criminal Justice Training Council, and the second was um, committing to review those model policies on, on body cameras and developing a statewide policy. And, and the reason for that second removal is because um, the other significant change that was made by the Senate is that they um, reverted to the original Senate language in section seven and eight, which are the body camera sections. So if you recall, the changes that you made were to push back the enforce the effective date for when VSP has to be outfitted with body cameras um, to October. Um, and they reverted back to the original Senate version, which, which made those provisions take effect on um, August 1st to make that requirement that, that DPS outfit its law enforcement officers with body cameras. Um, that's a August 1st requirement in the Senate version. <clears throat> Lena has a question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I watched as much as I could of this, um, their one o'clock Judiciary Committee meeting and maybe they had subsequent discussion and a more formal vote. Then, but I thought I had heard them say, and so, Brent, I'm just asking if you. I'm not. I'm not doubting your work in any way. I'm just asking if you can fill me in on what I, what their conversation was that I may have missed because I heard them say they felt like it was really important to move the date of implementation for the body camera up, but they were actually fine with the. Um, intent language that tasked a group to keep looking at the policy piece. It but it sounds like they took that out. It was their instruction to me that I remove that legislative intent section. Okay. Yeah, Selena, yeah, my, my understanding is that they want the body cameras to be used. It was uh, when we took out the, the word deployment, they, they want them used. And that in S124, they're committed to uh, reviewing the policy. Is that what, Selene, is that what you're asking? Or saying that you yes. were? Yeah, I just had, I, I had understood them to say like, yes, yes, it's fine. These groups can review the policy. Um, we just don't want the implementation date to be contingent on that in the way that we've we had sort of structured it. I think that the Senate was comfortable with the way that they, um, they, made that sort of a similar requirement in S-124, which was that the interested stakeholders were to review the policy and return to the legislature in January. Um, and the legislature could revisit that policy in January. But in the meantime, that the body cameras should be uh, purchased and deployed. I believe was there was the Senate testimony. Okay, thank you, that's very clarifying. Tom um, has a question. Yes. Um with changing the implementation date, um, I know we had some discussion around uh, uh, the timing or, or does DPS have enough time to get all the equipment and set everything up? Um, and, and I don't remember the exact, you know, exactly what was said on that. So I guess it's kind of a question for anybody. But it, I mean, August 1st is only a month away. And uh, um I, I don't know if they can order order what they need and, and, and have it by then. Um, and I, I don't really don't have an issue with, you know, if they do get them implementation before the policy because they are being used on some level and they are following 
uh, a policy. And uh, from what I remember, the policy that they're following uh, somewhat mirrors the ACLU anyway. But um, again, my big question is, can they can they get the equipment? Nader, were you raising your hand because you had thoughts on that? Yes, um, from what I remember, <clears throat> from what I remember of the commissioner's testimony is one of his concerns was us basically fiddling around with something that they are already in the process of doing and worrying that, well, it, worrying that any statutes we pass may interrupt the contracts that they're trying to develop with vendors. Um, that's, that's what I recall regarding um, this implementation. Um, is that an, you good, Tom? Yeah, well, I was, I was going to have a follow-up for Nader. And uh, so do you remember dates on implementation? It was, is that why we went with the August or the August, uh, the October date? to to allow them to get things set up no no it was so that we could have a policy in place prior my my recollection of commissioner sherling's testimony is that he was like the august implementation date was one of the that as it came over from the senate was one of the things he was fine with oh okay okay martin so it would seem that the, the question for me would be on this particular one with respect to the body cam cameras, and maybe this is a, a question that Otter can actually answer, is is there already a policy that, that the state police are following? Are they following the LIAB policy right now? Because I, I would be comfortable with at least, I, there's a lot of the other changes I'm not comfortable with, but I'd certainly be comfortable with this one because my main issue for the October 1st was the opportunity to make sure there was an appropriate policy in place. I'm a little less concerned if there's a policy being followed by the state police currently. So yes, um, during my time there, there was a policy regarding when you record. Um, I remember that distinctly because I know when I was brand new, there was a person who didn't record in a very uh, controversial, controversial scenario, I guess, and they ended up getting fired. So, so there, there must be policies, yes. I mean, there, there are policies, yeah. So folks, um, let's just make sure we understand what they're doing, ref, you know, reflect our memories regarding the testimony in terms of what we can live with or not. Let's, let's hold that. But, I, but it is helpful to um, these questions regarding um, is there a policy? Are they following it? Um, where are the body cameras? Because that's, that's what's important, my understanding to the Senate, that they be able to use the body cameras. Um, Bob Hooper has a question. Well, I'm confused, I think. Nader is saying that he wore a camera. We're talking about buying cameras. And I thought that when the Colonel was in last year, he told us that they were ready to pull the trigger on buying it, that only the data was the issue that they were holding back on. Was that a whole bunch of nonsense? Go ahead, Nader. I'd like to clarify, I apologize. I did not have a body camera. I had a cruiser camera. Oh, oh okay. We were an ear facing camera that also had a microphone that was attached to my uniform. And there was a policy for that video recording. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right, back to Bryn. Okay, so um, is, are those changes clear for section six or section seven and eight about the body cameras? Essentially, the Senate just reverted to their original language, which you can see in the side by side. So the last, um, the last change that's made in the Senate further proposal is that they removed the repeal um, of the new crime, the justify, or I'm sorry, the law enforcement use of prohibited restraint. Uh, the House version had repealed that 
on July 1st of 2021 and the Senate removed that repeal. But they did leave in the delayed effective date. Um, if, if you recall, the House pushed back the effective date of that crime to October 1st. And they left that as is. Uh, I know for me that, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. I was checking to see if anybody had their hand. I know for me that was that was really important. Um, that, that That's uh, a, a real big reason that I uh, ended up uh, supporting the new crime um, is to guarantee, not guarantee because there are no guarantees, but to, uh, to uh, push the legislature into making sure that this is looked at. And, and, uh, and I just feel that without the, the sunset, um, that it's not as, uh, as much of a, a, a sure thing, I guess, that um, it doesn't have to be a, a sure thing that, uh, that this is going to be looked at. And, and I think with the sunset, it, uh, it is a sure thing. Other questions from committee members? Rob, do you have your hand up? You're, you're muted. Mike. There, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if this is an appropriate time to ask this question, but I've had several law enforcement reach out for me on, I think it's just section seven here. On the, un, hold on. I'm, on the uh, law enforcement use of prohibited restraint. And I guess it'd be, it would be section seven. There seems to be mass confusion out there is whether law enforcement could use this or not when lethal force is justified. Um, they're, they're feeling that they could never use this particular hold or maneuver. It, it, did I miss something here somewhere? And I guess Commissioner Sherling and maybe uh, Mike O'Neill, was there some reference to having this section taken out earlier? Anybody want to answer that? John Gannon, sure. you have an uh, answer to that? Yeah, they wanted to carve out for lethal force. They didn't want the section eliminated. They just wanted to carve out. That was their testimony. Right. So we've heard, it, we've heard from the Defender General, and, 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 and this was covered during the Senate testimony as well, that uh, they still have uh, common law, and Bryn can weigh in on this as well, if I'm saying this wrong, they, uh, law enforcement still has the common law defense of, of uh, well, in, in uh, defense of themselves, you know, they, they, they can still um, use that hold. Um, and also there's the justifiable, justifiable homicide defense, which we're not talking about messing with the part of that current statutory defense related to uh, self-defense and the defense of others who are facing imminent harm. Uh, it's a separate uh, provision that we're talking about repealing that is inconsistent, but it's pretty clear that the self-defense, either common law or through the statutory justifiable homicide, that that is available to law enforcement uh, if, if they have used that hold in that kind of situation. I don't know, Bryn, if you have something to add to that or... No, I think that that's a, that was a great explanation. I would just add, I guess one thing I would add is that the justifiable homicide statute not only has a provision for self-defense, but it also has a provision that if a person kills or wounds another um, in the suppression of a person attempting to commit murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, burglary, or robbery, um, then that person shall be guiltless. So it's the justifiable homicide statute goes beyond self-defense. Okay, thank you. Jim Harrison has a question. Yeah, I am totally confused. Um, 
are we talking about the sunset of in that on the effective date area of the um, well, it used to be section five, but now it's section six. So no, um, one of the, this committee pushed back the effective date on two things. Um, yeah, no, I understand that. The body cam is one thing and they want to do it August one. The right. other thing was the um, extra penalty we put in there. In the, in the unprofessional conduct chapter? Yes. Yeah, so that implementation date was also extended to September 1st and the Senate did not, they accepted that change. They concurred. How about the sunset of that? You didn't put a sunset on that. You put a sunset on the crime, which is the law enforcement use of prohibited restraint and that sunset they did remove. Okay, I agree with Tom. I think that was an important part of our conversation. And um, and trying to get to a happy place um, with the bill. Um, I would encourage us to, you know, the other changes they've made in the intent and, and whatnot in the start of the body cams, you know, I'm, I'm fine with, but I think, um, I, I, I think in fairness to us, it doesn't mean it's gonna sunset next year, it means it's gonna give us time to come back and make sure that we consider it carefully with the state's attorneys and others. So I would argue that we should keep our language on the sunset back in. Okay. So I, I'm gonna jump in. I can't raise, I can't raise my hand cause I, cause I guess I'm a co-host. So I'm gonna jump in. So, so again, so I'm hearing that what's important is that the justifiable homicide as well as the new crime um, be looked at um, with the state's attorneys. We know that the state's attorneys are developing um, another, another approach to this and, uh, and that there's potentially conflict with the justifiable homicide and the new crime and, uh, and the sunset provided that opportunity to, to come back and revisit it. That, that's what I'm hearing, correct? Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. I don't know if you can see my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm sort of freezing that, but I, I got that you were <laughs> kind of on. Okay. Nodder, go ahead. Thank you. Um, you know, in, in regards to the sunset policy, as was mentioned earlier, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the appeal is going to sunset or that the bill is, that section is going to sunset. It means that we're going to revisit something that needs to be looked at more in depth. And I understand that it can be seen as a weak part of the bill for the um, proponents of it. But in my opinion, I think it's the opposite because it's not us just rubber stamping something and saying, yeah, we did it and let's move on. Instead, I think that we're indicating that this is something that needs to be looked at methodically and over a long period of time because there are a lot of things that we need to look at for this. That's, that's, a, that's a great explanation. And I want to thank Jim and Nodder. Um, so if, if this is looked at by the October 1st date that I think it's October 1st that we have uh, on the bill, um, then at, at that point, if it's looked at, we get everybody together, um, we're going to possibly be amending the law anyway, and the sunset can be eliminated then. That's the plan. Um, Barbara Rachelson has a hand up. So I'm wondering if the sunset is a deal breaker for them, and I don't know how time-wise, how many times we have to go back and forth without this bill not making it. We can change, I mean, we can make a commitment that we are going to be having extensive hearings of how it's going on, sunset or no sunset. It's not like we can't make a change if we have to give up the sunset. In a way, that feels like I'd rather give in on that than on some other deal breaker, like, I don't know, I shouldn't say deal breakers, but things that might not be acceptable in the short run. Uh, Warren. 
you'll want to unmute yourself. Okay, sorry about that. I thought I'd take it off. Uh, I, I have a strong tendency to agree with both Jim and Tom on this one. Uh, I think holding to the sunset does make it necessary for us to look at it. Uh, without it, it, it might be important to look at it, but not, not quite so necessary. But I also had the same concern that Barbara just expressed. How many times can we bat this ping pong ball across the back and forth across the table? Uh, if we really want to get done tonight, we maybe have, should think about sending yet another proposal of amendment over to the Senate and when they would deal with it or not. Um, but I don't know. It's not, a, it's not a deal breaker to me. I just think Tom originally had a, a good idea. And I thought, yeah, keep it there, yeah, do that. Do it that way. Not a deal breaker for me. And I, I don't know if it's a deal breaker for Tom or Jim, but I don't think it should be. Um, I don't, I, I hesitate to throw deal breaker yeah. out there. Um, it, I would rather say it's, it's important to me. Um, and, and again, for a couple of reasons, uh, it's the reason that I supported this, this piece of legislation. I, I wouldn't have supported a new crime without this in there and, and with uh, uh, the guarantee uh, that, we're, that it's going to be looked at. And I, I don't see it as being that necessary to take it out because again, what, what I just said is that if, it's, if this is uh, revisited before the October 1st date, it's gone anyway. <laughs> Right. Um, so I have a couple other people with hands up, um, Martin and then Selena and then Jim. So uh, I just emailed uh, everybody the policy that the Vermont State Police is using. So um, I, that gives me some comfort that that we could move to the August date, because I really felt that it was the policy issue as much as anything. And and. Uh, just a very quick review of the policy. I mean, it's not egregious. Uh, I mean, it probably needs some work because we need some other input from other stakeholders. But the fact is that they, from what I understand, they do have body cameras already. They're following this policy already. And if we can get those body cameras out there more quickly, and most importantly, if this is something that we can that we can even amend on our side, and hopefully that will end this. Uh, I, I think the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh all kind of go together as far as, not, not seventh, I'm sorry. The fifth, the sixth, and changing to August 1st all kind of go to that same issue. And I don't have a problem with that. I do have a big problem with changing the sunset uh, uh, for those two other provisions. Uh, and I think that we shouldn't concede on the intent language just because there'd be an awful big explanation that we would have to make in a very short time and it shouldn't make a big deal. And I think we have a very good explanation for why we can agree to those other three things related to uh, the body cameras. Uh, again, I'm not sure why that didn't come out through testimony as far as what they were doing right now, but uh, it didn't, but now we do know. That's where I, uh, I am. Thanks, Martin. Selena? Oh, I saw Maxine waving. So oh, I... Maxine, sorry. Yep. Well, let me hear Selena go ahead and then I may have a follow up. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Two things. Um, one, I would agree with Martin on the policy, although I think it's really, really critical that we come back in really short order to look at the policy. And if you all look at the mm -hmm. Testimony. I'm not sure if it was post. This was posted to both pages, but for sure, GovOps on Wednesday. If you look at James Lyle from the ACLU's um, testimony, he has a good memo that they submitted where they actually flagged the issues that they had with the policy. I believe the policy that Martin is referencing, the LEAB policy. Um, so it's at least for some stakeholders, not without issue, um, that policy. But I, I 
would feel comfortable um, and understand the reason for wanting to move the body cam implementation, make sure that that's happening sooner. And I think then there would be opportunity for us to ensure in August that we're digging right into the um, potential improvements to the policy. So I, I agree with that. And I, I um, agree with Barbara about the sunset. I felt I, for me, the sunset was kind of a double insurance felt like, um, by delaying the effective date, we were giving ourselves a lot of time to continue to work on this, to get it right, to make any, any necessary changes, um, to really involve stakeholders. And um, I think, you know, from, from there, maybe there's an opportunity to um, reopen the sunset discussion as, need, as needed, but that, that one definitely, um, I got the sense from the conversations I heard in the Senate that that was a, a pretty hard and fast one for them. And I'm just like, if you're taking a straw poll, it, it's not for me because, especially because we pushed out the effective date already for that section. Uh, so I just wanted you all to know that I texted Commissioner Sherling to ask him if he wants to join and give some clarity to their thoughts on August 1st versus October 1st. Um, since the majority of the work we've been doing has been aimed at listening to testimony. Uh, Maxine? Right, that's what I, um, I would like some clarification because we took out deployment, right? And so I, I would like some clarification on, do they have the cameras? You know, are they using them? I, I feel like we're hearing some different things. So, um, so that would be good. Um, the other thing is, in terms of um, you know ACLU, various different policies. You know, when we do do our listening, I you know, I I think we'll hear different opinions on um, on all the policies, including ACLU. So, um, so and. And the sunset was one way to make sure that that new crime is revisited. And I'll just throw it out there that there, there may be another way to, um, to have that assurance. So, but, I, but I understand, we wanna make sure that we <clears throat> sooner than later. And I think, you know, I think the state attorneys are working on something. Um, you know, now, and I, th and I think, you know, during August or, or, you know, before that, my, my hope is that um, a number of stakeholders will be, will be working on, on the new crime and justifiable homicide and in other ways to, uh, to look at this. Jim Harrison. Yeah, I don't want to beat this up, but um, I think there was one version of the bill yesterday that took out this section um, and the sunset was part of a compromise to put it back in and force us to deal with um, uh, perhaps legitimate concerns from state's attorneys uh, and others on um, making this work correctly. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I, I think that's an important part of the bill. We just had a 147 to zero vote on this bill. We all worked very hard over three days to um, <clears throat> reach consensus. And I'm sure there are, <clears throat> excuse me, pieces in here we can all nitpick and pick apart. Um, I think that's important. Uh, you know, if it makes people feel more comfortable, you know, extend the sunset out to you know, next December, you know, a year and a half. Um, but the reality is we want to do it before October. We can take away the sunset at that time. And if we can't, we have next session. But if you don't put a sunset in there, um, the, the tendency is to let it go. Um, so I think it forces us to address the issue. Sunsets routinely get extended or eliminated year after year. So I don't think it's an issue of this going away. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, we'll go to Martin and then Commissioner Sherling is with us to talk about body cams. Go ahead, Martin. 
Just one quick other thing about the sunset is that it's, it's just as critical that we're uh, repealing uh, mm -hmm. the justifiable homicide. I mean, I think that's the, one of the biggest issues and those should be dealt with together because they, they work together. So uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with, I hate to say it, with Jim and Tom, uh, that that's I think, a, critical, <laughs> a very critical part of <laughs> what we, we have put together. Oh, the spirit of tripartisanism. Isn't it lovely? Um, okay, so Commissioner Sterling, if you are able to join us for a moment, um, we have uh, we have a, a different suggestion of an implementation date for body cams. And Bryn will correct me if I don't have the bill in front of me. Um, but we had an October 1st date by which DPS um, should have body cams. And the Senate is proposing an amendment that would um, return to the August 1st date. Is that correct, Bryn? That's correct. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so we are at the final stages of uh, vendor selection. The vendors have been selected, but there is a legislative mandate for an independent review of the IT project because of the size and cost. That independent review typically takes six weeks or so, could be four, could be eight. Um, and that would be beginning sometime in mid-July. So August 1st is impossible. You'd have competing uh, statutes. It would say uh, deploy. Or actually, I'm not sure what the ask is. I guess I should ask. Is it we're supposed to have them all in the field by the 1st of August? If that's the case, that is not either physically possible nor contractually possible, um, given the constructs that we work within in, in purchasing. Um, I guess I should pause and ask if if that is if if that is what is being contemplated here. What, what is it that's supposed to be accomplished by a given date? Who's got an answer to that? Because I don't have the the Senate original bill or ours in front of me. Well, they talked about deployment. They they wanted the word. We took out the words deployment, and they wanted the words deployment. They want body cameras ASAP. But isn't part of deployment getting it reviewed? I mean, this is all the process. It's not like Commissioner Schilling saying it's sitting on his desk. The process is moving forward. If you were to word it that the purchase and deployment is underway by the 1st of August, um, I think that's going to cut it a little tight on independent review. So. You know, you could split the difference and say first of September, and I think we can meet that. Everything will be signed and in motion by that point. That's that's. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Maxine. Unmute. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I believe that's where the confusion is. I I think that um. Leg certain legislators think that you have the cameras, you're ready to go, or you're out there using them. And so that the removal of the um, word deployment actually slows things down. And that's, that's where I think clarification would be helpful. Can I, can I just point out that the actual language requires DPS to initiate the acquisition and deployment. Um, and that, that section takes, a pe takes effect on passage. With so, that language, there is no issue with it being effective on uh, on passage. So that gets rid of the August 1st date also? No, no, that the August 1st date goes to uh, Section 7, which says the department shall ensure that every department law enforcement officer who exercises law enforcement powers is equipped with a body camera or other video recording device on his or her person. Uh, that's okay. what the first is uh, relates to. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, something the commissioner said. Uh, September first date came up, and the the concern I have about the September date is, he said, I think we can, 
and um, I've I've seen it before. And when we've done legislation, um, given people dates, and I remember a number of years ago in human services that I, I brought it up to somebody. I said, "Are you sure you can do it by that date?" And they said, "Yes." And they were back in the next year. And of course, we're, we're asking him, why the heck didn't you get it done? But so uh, I am I would rather be a, a little more cautious with the date and give a little extra time so it, it is done by the, the date that is in uh, in legislation. But I mean. Selena. Yes, Commissioner Sherling, I was just going to ask if you had shared um, any of those concerns about that timeline with the Senate around the, the, um, the conflicting statutory requirements, for example. I'm just trying to understand what they have understood. I do not believe I testified on this, uh, on dates with the Senate. I'm not, I don't recall that that was, that may not have even been in the draft that I testified to. Got it, thank you. Um, so Martin, I need to ask you to repeat the last thing that you said that is in reference to the August 1st date. That, that's uh, section seven and that is states that the department shall ensure that every department law enforcement officer who exercises law enforcement powers is equipped with a body camera or other video recording device on his or her person. So you in immediately initiate uh, upon passage and then you have until October 1st to equip all your law enforcement officers. And that seems like even that is a uh, short time frame. The, yeah, but that's, is that, I, I don't I believe it, we're going to be able to. We've got to roll it out to 11 locations. There's technology that has to go to all 11 locations. Um, it also strikes me that as it, there's a, been a little bit of rewording there, um, it, technically the colonel and the command staff are law enforcement officers, but they don't carry body cameras. They're not in the field. Um, so it's a little, we haven't, we haven't budgeted to give people that don't actually go out and do work um, body cameras. So there's an incongruity there in Op, the way it will be operationalized to what's been written. Um, thank you, uh, Jim Harrison. Question for the commissioner. It's a question more for Bryn on this section. Um, if we add the words like the Senate suggestion and deployment, does that mean they have to be used by August 1st. If it does, that won't work. No, the de word deployment doesn't appear in section seven. It appears in the following section, which takes effect on passage. And it's the session law that requires the DPS initiate the acquisition and deployment. Okay, and so they're already doing seven, that. Right. And I just want to point out that this language hasn't changed much since um, it was the first iteration of the bill that the commissioner did testify on. I just want to make that clear. Okay, and thank you. Maxine, you will have a clarification, right? Well, I I think we're mixing up, you know, six and seven is passed by the Senate, seven and eight and, you know, whatever. I think we're mixing up the sentence because, um, you know, for instance, when the R section seven that talks about law enforcement um, officer exercises powers equipped with a body cam, that's where we, we took out um, the, you know, when it should be recording. That's, that's what that was about. And so I think if we wanna talk about deployment, immediate acquisition, all of that, we need to be talking about our section eight and the Senate's section seven and looking, you know, maybe starting with the Senate how section seven, um, you know, how that how that reads, how when it goes into effect, and and having the commissioner um, testify to that language as to whether or not it's it's um, doable or is being done, whatever. I, I guess I want to make sure that we understand which 
one we're talking about for the August versus October. Because I'm a little, that's not how I understood it, uh, Maxine. So, Bryn. Sure, sure thing. So, if we're looking at the side by side, is that what everybody's looking at? I want to be referring to something that is that people are looking at. Or are you looking at the house version of, of the bill? I'm on the side by side. Okay. Yep. So, so I'm seeing some nods there. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead with the side by side. So I'm on page, um, I'm starting with section seven. This is on page 17. So if you look at the second column to, from the left, this is the house version language. And um, Representative Lalonde is right. The change that you made was to remove when those devices are supposed to be recording. Other than that, you didn't make any changes to this section. This is the section that goes into effect in the House version on October 1st. In the Senate version, it was set to go into effect on August 1st. So this is the statutory requirement that the Vermont State Police be outfitted with cameras. And what the Senate did was that they said, we don't agree with the October 1st start date. It's got to be an August 1st start date. So this requirement in the Senate version would go into effect on August 1st. The following section, section eight, is that session law that really is talking about costs. So it's directing the department to immediately begin, the, initiate the acquisition and deployment of body cameras. And then if there's ongoing costs that they can't cover within their budget, it directs them to um, make that a part of their proposal when they come back in August with their um, budget proposal. So I, my understanding from the commissioner's testimony is that the real concern is in section seven, that statutory requirement that Vermont State Police be outfitted with these body cameras effective on August 1st. So it makes sense to me that that's where you focus your um, questions. I'm hearing that August 1st is impossible. Commissioner. That's correct. Uh, August Thank 1st you. is impossible. Uh, October 1st is is highly unlikely. It's just it's going to take longer than that. It's this is a very large IT project. Um, other questions for the commissioner before I jump back into folks who were in the queue. Um, well, while we have him, could I just inquire about section five? You can. I'm not positive that the commissioner has his um, has the bill in front of him, so you might describe what you're asking okay. about. Thank you. I, I do chair. have the, I do have the side by side up at this stage, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, so it's the law enforcement use of prohibited restraint. Um, I've received some feedback from law enforcement. There seems to be some confusion out there about this um, as to whether an officer could even use this when lethal force lethal force is justified um and what wasn't it you that had looked for a carve out around this or something yes um i, I stand by my original testimony which is that uh i have grave concerns uh, in creating a parallel statute that is for law enforcement only when this exists on the books already as an aggravated assault or a variety of different manslaughter or murder charges that would be brought under these circumstances and it also is missing the carve out. Um, I think trying to fall back on the current justifiable homicide statute um, is, and actually I think that language might now be missing. Um, it, it is, this is gonna create uh, problems if folks are in, it, again, these are very rare instances, but in my career I have been in fights with people much, much larger. I think you've all met me. I am not particularly big. Um, and it's really anything you can get a hold of to try to contain someone. Um, and you could end up with an inadvertent arm around a neck, which is technically uh, subject to a 20 year felony here with no carve out for uh, in defense of yourself. Um, we're, no one's making an argument that we should be using these things as a course of business or as a taught technique or um, in the overwhelming majority of circumstances, but it is, it, it, I, 
I just can't stress enough that the types of things that unfold on the street from time to time are sometimes impossible to control without just resorting to whatever, um, whatever you can do to defend yourself. Um, and that said, if there's the other component, which I testified to previously, which is there may be a circumstances where you could use a firearm or someone used the example of a rock or a flashlight or something to hit someone in the head, but you're not allowed to use any kind of restraint around the neck at the same time. It is just, it's incongruous with, um, you know, with those, those very unique circumstances and very rare circumstances, but very difficult circumstances that do sometimes occur. Um, so I, I, again, I'm not suggesting that in any way that neck restraints should be a normal course of business or that the ones we've seen publicized in other places in the country uh, should be allowed. Um, or that we even have recent examples of them being used in Vermont. But I know historically that from time to time, you end up in a tussle where you have someone's neck uh, wrapped around, your arm is wrapped around their neck, your leg is wrapped around their neck. You, it's, it, it's the, some of these events are indescribable. They look like uh, a, a messy street fight, which is actually what they are. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so I do want, in the interest of time, to help us get back to the instances of amendment that the Senate is proposing to us. Um, so, so I do. I've had Ken with his hand up for a while. So go ahead, Ken. Thank you. If the body cams are purchased and and they're hooked up and everything. I like that, don't you still need to train the officers properly, which is gonna take even more time or we're opening ourselves up for huge lawsuits? Uh, that is correct. There are, I, I can just walk you through very, very briefly. Um, you know, we've got to, we have to finalize the contract where you have to do the, uh, the independent review. We've then got to deploy to 11 locations um, we have to set up the gear. We have to. We actually have to change the internet connectivity because these are cloud hosted. So there's internet connectivity that has to be changed to a number of sites. Um, there's training that has to happen, um, and we have to get all the accounts set up uh, on the back end of the cloud hosting. It, this is not a simple point and shoot, you know, video camera that you buy. You're, t you're talking. This is the de December. If we're lucky. Uh, Commissioner, you have become muted. I'm not sure how. I don't know what's happening. There's a weird icon on my phone. Now I can um, hear you. Okay. Uh, the, it, you know, we're, we're going to roll them out as fast as possible. I, I'm not sure I can even give you a specific timeline Exactly. Um, be, because we've got to, we, we have to negotiate with, uh, with internet providers as well to be able to provide the backhaul to upload uh, the video, which is, that is work that's already in progress, but it's not easy, as you know, in Vermont. Commissioner, I understand fully what you're saying. And I've said right from day one that, that we're, this is trying to be implemented too fast. And, and from, the, from the Board of Selectmen in, in, in Northfield, this stuff just doesn't happen overnight. And you're talking about the whole state of Vermont. We're talking about only the state police uh, with that, uh, Ken. It's a whole state of Vermont. It's 202 Martin. communities across 10 barracks plus headquarters. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot. Right. It's the state, but I just want to make very clear, Ken, it's just the state police. Martin, I know that. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, Barbara Rachelson. So we have an issue that isn't really our issue. It's a misunderstanding the Senate has. Is it appropriate for chairs to talk to their co-chairs and just say, it's not like they're sitting in the barracks with these boxes of um, equipment ready to go? Because it's sort of a factual issue as opposed to a uh, difference of opinion. 
So we knew that we had a very tight timeline to consider the aspects of this bill that um, that were sent over to us from the Senate, and we were given a directive from the speaker to do as much as we could to listen to the testimony, to hear from the various interested parties and stakeholder groups, and to come up with our best work. And so um, I don't think that we need to to uh, to to do something that flies counter to what we feel we've heard in testimony. Oh, all I'm saying is if the Senate realized that the it's going to take a while for it's not I, they are confused about these body cameras and we could change it all we want, but that's not going to make any difference. So I just didn't know if there was a way to just make sure they knew that if this is not political bargaining, it's just an oversight on their part. Well, it, if just tell them they're confused. <laughs> well, I, I think when we go back with uh, with, uh, I guess, our proposal, it, it would be in there to explain that it, it's impossible for it to happen. So let's be clear that we haven't even passed our initial work on this bill yet. <laughs> so let's uh, let's keep that in mind for a moment. Uh, Martin Lalonde has been patient. Uh, so just to get to circle back to what Rob uh, was talking about, uh, what he's heard from other folks and the concern, a couple real quick points. One is that the uh, defenses, again, of self-defense are available. All those things are available, but I understand that there was confusion and concern from Commissioner Sherling and from the state's attorneys, and that's precisely why we need the effective date and the sunset. That's what we put in there to deal with that issue, to give us the time to do it and to force us to do it. So, so that's another reason why you know, I think that we need to keep those two components in there. So. I agree with you. All right, I don't see any other hands up. And so um, before we um, before we let the commissioner go, is there anything else committees that you wanted to ask? And I would hope that we could concentrate on the instances of amendment that the Senate is asking us to review as opposed to reopening parts of the bill that we just barely dried our ink on last night. Um, Martin. I would like to confirm with the commissioner that if we add to the provision about initiating the acquisition, if we add initiate the acquisition and deployment, if that causes any problem, I just want to confirm whether that does or does not cause a problem. I, I, I think that would work because that uh, the reality is that's already in progress. So you could put any date you want on that language. So it, let me just make sure I understood you correctly. You are already initiating the acquisition and deployment of body cams. Correct. Okay. And I, I do have some additional information on um, the uh, prohibited restraint from our legal counsel who just emailed me if the committee is willing to hear it. I think the next uh, two months when we're reconsidering yep. it. We are coming back to this in August, I believe is the plan. Um, Jim Harrison. So commissioner, would it help if we just took out the section that says you will have them in place and used by October 1st in our bill? And then obviously we'll talk to you in August or September, get an update. And if you're moving too slow in our collective um, wisdom, we will tell you and put a date in. That sounds fine to me, sir. And I nominate Rob to go tell the Senate that they're obviously uninformed. <laughs> okay, so we need to we need to remember that uh, that we have. Uh, a limited amount of time and that we are in the middle of um, floor session as well. So let's see if we can drive towards um, a conclusion of this conversation. Let's see how persuasive our chairs really are here.
are we still all connected? We are. <laughs> okay. like, I was waiting for the leaders to lead. Here for me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was looking at you, Tom. Well, I think we're. I'm muted. Sounds like a. Sounds like everybody's questions have been answered and everybody understands the instances of amendment. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, then why don't we, uh, I guess we're done with this portion uh, and, and the purpose of this, uh, this meeting. Just tell them it's awful hard to move on perfection. I mean, are we trying to find, um, come to a consensus or a, a vote on um, a counter proposal or whether or not to concur with some or all of their instances of amendment in this meeting or where our next step is simply to pass 219 at third reading and what's the, what are the mechanics Maxine and Sarah that you think needs to happen at this stage given given where things are at timing wise. So oh, I, I couldn't I can't hear you Maxine. Did you say something? I think go ahead Sarah and then um, oh, I apologize. So um, I guess my inclination is to uh, is to use this opportunity as a gut check to say did you know, are there uh, were there solid reasons that we heard testimony about for why we landed where we did on these instances of um, amendment that the Senate is proposing to us? And if we find that the Senate ha makes a good point on any of these instances of amendment, and and we feel we should move uh, move forward to change this bill before third reading so that uh so that they um because they've made a good point and uh and and we support it then we might move to do that um and you know i guess the purpose of gathering all of us here together and even hearing um more testimony from the commissioner was really to say did do we feel like we got the policy right or do we want to make an amendment and does that help selena maxine you can feel free to characterize what we're driving at if differently if you feel differently from the perspective of uh of the judiciary committee right my initial intent was to make sure we understood what the senate did and so that we that's we have done um, and you have two more hands up. Um, let's yes. see what folks have to say, and then I'm wondering if we should go back to the Senate to the instances of amendment <laughs> and go go through them again because we got sidetracked on on things. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. So Jim, and then Mike, and then we'll go back to look at each instance. So if we just pass third reading as it's on the floor right now. The Senate's going to tack on this amendment unless we tell them change it by X, Y, and Z, and it's going to come back to us. So I think it would make sense to take the pieces of their amendment that we can live with, adopt them as, as an amendment before third reading so that we can send it back to them and hopefully they'll say, okay, they met us part way and be done with it. Otherwise, we've got to play ping pong. Um, and I don't know about you, but, you know, this has been a long Zoom day already. Do we want to be here at 2 a.m.? Um, so I think that would make the most sense. Uh, um, and I think we can get there. Um, <clears throat> I think we can get there. I, uh, some of the stuff they're asking for is is wordsmithing. Um, some of it's more substantive, and we can, we've can we already talked about those. Uh, and it sounds like we have to fix one of the pieces on our own bill as it is with the uh, actual use of the body cams. Thank you. Uh, Mike Berwicki and then Martin. 
Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tact, and I'm going to suggest we pass the bill that we have and see what they do. Martin? So my concern uh, with the idea that Jim raised is that if they continue with these, we've just uh, given away some of our chips for the bargaining table, if that's going to be the next move. Um, I'd rather, if, if I was going to do an amendment before third reading, I'd want some sort of a commitment, at least from the chair of, of Senate Judiciary, that he will endorse that and push that, uh, as opposed to just making our bargaining position weaker if we need to end up bargaining this. Any other committee discussion on the general go ahead tom yeah um i i guess i i would hesitate to uh amend the bill like like martin was saying uh, i don't think it's a bad idea but um i, I think leaving our chips on the table is is a better idea and uh, you know as we go through this again i mean we you know uh we need to i think we need to just each section we need to say do, do we accept it or reject it and uh and 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 use that from there i mean it's it's going to be a little give and take everywhere i think uh um i think we know uh some of the things we can live with as far as what we've heard with this discussion and some of the things that we're a little more dug in on um and i i don't i really don't think there's going to be that much back and forth and give and take at this this point of the session Seems we're running out of time. Uh, Warren. I'll make it short. I, I would stand with Martin. Uh, from any negotiating standpoint, we should stand strong. Uh, I remember back in the days when I was chair of commerce, sitting across the table from Vince Aluzzi, which was not a real pleasure. <laughs> but. Uh, we, we should hold firm at this at this moment. I hate to give up on the, on the one where I agree with Tom and Jim. Uh, and I know that there are others that we can give in on, but hang tight. Ken. How can we do this when we can't meet the, the date for the body camps? The October 1st date, is that what you mean? Correct. Um, well, presumably we'll be back in session in mid-August. And I guess if the commissioner thought at that point that it was unworkable, we could make a change then. So he's already told us it's unworkable. How, how, how can we go out on the, on the floor and do that? <laughs> I mean, I want this to happen, but I want it to be done right. Did I lose that everybody or did I kill people or what happened? Well, no, you brought little, up a good point. Pat. There's Pat. lots of blue hands that are raising right now. So Nader, did you want to jump in next to in answer to Ken? Uh, not in specific answer to Ken. Uh, I mean, I can make fun of him later, maybe. But no, the um, I just wanted to echo what has been said already, which is I think that we should stand fast. Um, Warren, did you have your hand up again? You're going to want to unmute. I'm sorry, I think that was a mistake, Madam Chair. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Jim. Yeah, as I think about it, let's stand, let's stand firm. And um, the, the implementation date um, for October, we can change. We have to go back and visit the policing issues. Anyhow, we can change it then if that's not realistic. So let's, let's hold firm. Um, and, and again, Rob, I'm 
I'm sure that that was a good one, but you were starting to garble. So um, I'm going to consider that to be in the jelly donut category and call on Martin Lalonde. <laughs> Up. Sorry. There you go. I was just going to say to Ken that that yeah, I think we fix it in August, September because I, I don't like the. I, I want to hold firm, but holding firm and then saying to the Senate, "Well, I see your August first instead of October first, and we we come back with December thirty first. That that's kind of will up poke <laughs> the bear a little bit more than I think we need to right at this point, especially since I think we all agree that. We're going to have to deal with this and when we come back. Well, we've got other effective dates I think we need to take a look at as well. Selena? I'm wondering if process-wise we could just go through each instance of amendment and figure out where the, where, um, you know, whether it's a straw pull on each, like where we, we want to hold firm with our proposal where we could accept their proposal of, of amendment or where we have some alternative to both to offer that gets us somewhere in the middle. Cause it seems, it seems clear to me, like there's, there is not a, um, unless I'm just not counting well, I don't think we're on a path to concur with their proposal of amendment here. Um, so I have two more hands up and then and then maybe we can go through each of the seven, eight instances. That Does that sound good? Yes, please. Seven. Um, Martin. Having trouble with this button today. I, I would I would um, be disinclined to go through and show our hand even in that manner by saying, yeah, we, we agree with, with this one. We disagree with that one. Um, I'm not sure what that gets us, except to show the Senate that w where what our position is going into negotiation. Uh, I think that that undermines the, if we end up having a committee of conference, it undermines their ability to, to negotiate. So uh, I really don't think we should go through in that manner. I think probably if Maxine or Sarah are gonna talk to Dick Sears, they probably have a, enough of a feel for what is a no-go and what we may have some ability to move on, but I'd rather not have that more formalized with the straw vote. And I wouldn't want to play poker with uh, Martin. Uh, Mar um, Warren Kitzmiller. Okay, I found that I did have something. Are you hearing me? Okay. Uh, I think the, the concern about the August, October 1st date is just that when, a, when Section 7 takes effect and it, it's meaningless. It says the department shall ensure and that takes effect on October 1st. It doesn't say that they shall ensure that they all have them by October 1st. They, you know, they say we're doing it, we're ensuring it, we're, we're in the process. There's, there's no particular, that date is only a date that this takes a, that the chapter takes effect. It doesn't mean that it has to be completed by them. In fact, it's a pretty toothless section of that because there's no date by which it has to be accomplished. So I, I think Ken's I think Ken's concern, uh, which I understand, but I, I I I just don't think it really matters in this case because all of this is a date that it takes effect. That's all I got. Mike Merwicki. Um, I'm going to just reiterate the idea that uh, we hold fast. I don't think we start going over the bill now. And I think if we want, we can we can uh, suggest if the Senate wants to hold this bill up the way they did in, in Senate Judiciary, then we're just going to sit tight and make sure we do it right. Okay, so why don't we adjourn? Yep. It's so nice to be back together with you all again. Let's not do this again too soon. I agree. <laughs> okay, and, Jim, and Jim, you do want to play poker against me. I always lose. 
Yeah, he's got his tells, Jim, once you get to know him. Uh, we can go off live, and I will see you all back on the floor. Thank you.